mentioned some Blue Jays action before the game, with, before the break, sorry. Uh, but there's actually another team in action. That's right, the Border Cats looking to rebound after their 7-2 loss to the Mankato Moondogs. First pitch is tonight at 7.05. And in Majors news, former Border Cat Seth Frankoff made his Majors debut for the Cubs last night. Frankoff went two innings, gave up four hits, two runs, and two earned runs in a 5-3 loss to the Rockies. Elsewhere in the majors last night, the Toronto Blue Jays kicking off a little home away from home series. They were at Safeco for their first of a three-game series. Joe Biagini on the mound. Mariners counter with Sam Gaviglio. Pick this one up top. A second man on the corners. Ryan Goen sends a grounder to first. Mariners should have had the double play, but Danny Valencia gets caught up on his own feet and stumbles before he can make the throw. Russ Martin makes it 1-0 Blue Jays. One inning later, Gaviglio goes low and away on Bautista for two Ks, but third time's the charm for the Dominican. He crushes the breaking ball over the wall and left. Jays up two early. Bottom of three now, and it's a wild pitch from Joe Biagini that puts the speedy Gerard Dyson on third base. That's never something you want to hear. A couple of pitchers later, it's former Yankee Ben Gamble ropes one into the gap in right, and there he is again. Dyson gets the Mariners on the board. It's 2-1. Bottom of 7-2 on for the Mariners. Danny Valencia singles to left. Zeke Carrera is there, but he overthrows the cutoff man, forces Russ Martin to go for two. Tulo misses the tag. We're tied at two with men on the corners. Now, bases loaded. Dyson, he sees your shift, raises you a liner down the center. Picks up one RBI, but Martin gets the tag on the second. Mariners up by three now. That's going to do it for Joe Biagini. So Aaron Loop is in for the eighth, and he fares no better. Kyle Seeger sends one to the gap in right field. That plates Heredia, and that's where this one ends. Diaz punches out the last three. Dyson gets a run in RBI and a steal. 4-2 is your final. Jays look for revenge tonight at 10-10. So to soccer and the PDL. The Des Moines Menace are the only team in the Heartland Division to sport a winning record over the Thunder Bay Chul. And as such, there's no better team suited for the home opener than their rivals to the south. Here's the highlights from last night's action. Thunder Bay Chill taking on the Des Moines Menace, the first of two meetings between these teams this weekend. Pick it up, 10 minutes in, Mitch Osmond with a good ball over the top for Herman Alfaro to run onto, but he sails the acrobatic shot high and wide. Then just seconds later, the Menace sound a ball down the line, but Osmond is there again with a crunching tackle. Ten minutes later, Abraham Villon slicing through the attacking third slides a through ball for Brandon Schwartz and Ruber, but the big number nine can't get enough on it. Skip to the 25th, the Menace with their third consecutive corner, and off the volley, Hayden Partain blasts it into the bottom corner. A magnificent strike against the run of play, but he puts the Menace up one. Chill looking to get back into it, though. Villon in the box, sends it across. Schwartz and Druber has his shot saved. Then Kyle Ein gets a hand on the rebound. He was fantastic all night. Jump ahead to the second half. Chill off the corner. Ball to the far post. Eddie Sanchez looking for a volley of his own, but he puts it into the side netting. Just minutes later, beautiful passing. Sets up Vio in the box, but he's just offside. The Chill getting their chances, but they're still down one. Brandon Schwartz and Drew were looking to change that. He chips a through ball for Adam Abdullawi, but Luca Puster puts in a game-saving tackle. And talk about game-saving, how about this? Final minutes, Chris McKengo lasers one on net, but Ein makes not one, but two incredible stops. He had four saves from inside the six-yard box alone. The menace take it one nothing. the final. I think it all just comes down to, once again, how I've, how I've been trained. Um, I think one of my skill sets is close-range reaction shot stopping, and I think... You know, with I was able to come out, close down the angles, close down the space, and just make it so everything was tight and they didn't really have any open opening. It was a good goal. We were, was a, we, we had to defend better. Uh, it's a mistake and happened during the game. But uh, if you want to go all the way through the championship, we have to deal with a one nothing down, and uh, uh, we didn't react the way we were supposed to. I believe we didn't deserve to lose the game, but certainly we didn't deserve to win it. The Chiu will be without Abraham Vio in tomorrow's rematch. He was sent off for something he said to the referee. Weather permitting, we'll have the highlights from tonight's rematch on tomorrow's show. And from Leicester City's impossible title to the Cavaliers' historic comeback, the past year has been a less than subtle reminder about how unpredictable sports can be. So it shouldn't come as a surprise when unranked Yelena Ostapenko made it to the final at Roland Garros. It was a miracle run for the youngster from Latvia. After losing the first set 6-4 and falling 3-0 down in the second, Ostapenko sprinkled a little pixie dust and took flight. 
She soared past number three, Simona Halep, to come back and win 4-6, 6-4, 6-3. It's Ostapenko's first professional title and her first ever Grand Slam win. Entering the tournament as the 47th ranked player in the world, Ostapenko could find herself as the highest ever ranked Latvian. None of her countrymates have ever ranked higher than 10th. After just turning 20 on Thursday, the sky's the limits for the former Wimbledon junior champ. Look out, WTA. There's a new face in town. And on the men's side of things, it will be Rafael Nadal against Stan Wawrinka on Sunday. The 32-year-old Swiss star stunned top rank Andy Murray in five sets in the semifinals, while Nadal knocked off Don Dominic Thiem. Rafa will be going for his 10th title at Roland Garros. Uh, on clay in French Open in the final is, uh, is probably the biggest challenge you can have in tennis. He's uh, the best player ever on clay. Uh, as you say, he's going for his tennis. Roland Garros, so it's something really impressive, something tough. And ahead of tomorrow's Grand Prix, some big news out of Montreal. The only Canadian race will live on in the Formula One circuit. The first day of practice at the Canadian Grand Prix was overshadowed by a major announcement. It took a bit of time, but we made it. A five-year extension was unveiled, meaning the race will be a fixture of Formula One schedule until 2029. The cost? $98.5 million to be shared by the municipal, provincial and federal levels of government. I had the opportunity this morning to spend a couple hours with the mayor and the passion, the leadership, the vision, uh, the enthusiasm for Montreal was, uh, was evident and our brand, our product, uh, I know is in very, very good hands. The deal also settles what's been a source of controversy in recent years, upgrades to the paddocks. The original plan was to have them ready for this year's race at a price of $30 million. Instead, we have a new date, 2019, and a new price, $48 million. No BS, okay? It, it, it's, it's, it's a done deal, and we'll do what we have to do, and uh, there's no reason now. No, no gray zone. It's good news for Canadian racing fans. Montreal has been the home of the Grand Prix since 1978. Over that span, it's had its share of unforgettable moments, from Gilles Villeneuve's historic win to one of the wettest races in Formula One history. It's great to, to have those Canadian flags in the grandstands. And in my outlap today, I, I looked at the fans and I saw you know people people waving and cheering, and uh, that's that's really cool. It's the first time he's driving on this track, so I think he's uh, you know definitely uh, he has a lot to improve, a lot to learn. It's only his first day, so it's. He's uh, okay, he's normal. It's been a difficult start to the year for the rookie driver. Through six races, he's yet to achieve a top 10 finish. Now, it would be asking a lot to see him on the podium come Sunday, but maybe with the home crowd cheering him on, Stroll can have a breakthrough. And some local sports news to get you caught up on. Evan DeGrazia shot a one under 71 at White Castle to win the stall open qualifier today. Dustin Barr finished second with a 73. Your next chance to win is at the Keg District Open. That'll be on Canada Day weekend. We'll have those highlights and the chill highlights coming up in tomorrow's show. That's from tonight's game, assuming the weather allows it. Yeah, so we're actually in an extreme thunder thunderstorm warning in Thunder Bay and Northern Ontario. We'll have more details at weather when we come back.